Missy! Three years ago, Zahir poisoned Cora, severely injuring her. While her friends moved on with their lives, Cora remained in the South Pole. Ouch. Why does that sound so rough? Chapter 2. Cora Alone. Wow. Whoa. What an opener. Sometimes a picture says a thousand words. Beautiful shot. Very telling shot. Nice. Self-water healing. What in the world? You again. Again? She still has the chain. Leave me alone! What's wrong with her? Wow, she is really not okay. She's literally chained to that event at the end of season three. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but I can't wait for you to leave. How else is she supposed to take that? I'm gonna write you so many letters and oh, just to get the ball rolling. Here, spoiler alert. Pabu and I already miss you. Aw. A little time alone will be good for me. Your recovery should be your number one concern. Bye, Cora. Get better soon. Don't forget to write. I think like Cora going home alone is maybe not the best answer. I think the best thing for her to do would be to stay around and feel like she's useful. Because it's, it's like focusing on things that make you feel good about yourself that get you through difficult times. Resting is really important as well. But I mean, we all know the feeling of like sinking into like a, you know, a hole where you're just in a state of waiting and being leisurely and like it's just not good for us i think at least if it's a long stretch of time you know like short resting periods are great but like i think for most people we just do better when we have our hands busy it just fulfills so many natural elements of our beings <sighs> this is really dark you're not sleeping you're barely eating will you please go see katara that sounds like a good idea Hurts to watch. You know, it's interesting to think about because in these shows, we sort of have an elevated expectation of the heroes. You know, you fight the bad guy, you win, you stand strong, you move on. But like, if we're really, really trying to connect with the characters, what Korra went through is incredibly traumatic. People died. She almost died. She saw the face of evil eye to eye. That kind of thing just shatters your view of the world and like your own stability and like your safety, your capability. It just takes like one encounter to completely shake your world. And that happens even with really like daily things you know you can just meet someone whose personality is a certain way that re that you realize you have a blind spot or you have a weakness or something and that can completely like destroy you for you know a certain period of time but what Cora went through was just to another extreme it's like literally people are trying to kill her and she actually almost died it's a really interesting tack that the show is taking because it's very rare you don't really see heroes suffering from like trauma that often but you know it makes a lot of sense I know what it's like to go through a traumatic experience. That is true. If you dedicate yourself to getting better, you'll recover stronger than ever. Concentrate on your big toe. Visualize it moving. Wiggle your big toe. <gasps> Did you see that? The mind can be a powerful ally or your greatest enemy. Now, I want you to try taking a step. Use your mind to overcome the pain. I love how Naga's concerned. Things are going well here. I just got a big contract to help redesign the city's infrastructure. So I'll be keeping pretty busy for a while. So I'm not very good at writing letters. It's 2.15 in the afternoon. Weather is fair. Chance of snow showers later today. <laughs> Weatherman Mako. I'm back on the beat. Beifang has me staking out the Red Monsoon hideout. My dearest Avatar Korra. I'm so busy and having so much fun. Have passed since your departure to convalesce in the homeland of your tribesmen. I feel our friendship knows neither time nor distance. Written just like Nug. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, he writes like Nugtuck would write. He really is Nugtuck. You will be most pleased to learn that I found gainful employment with Sir Varric and the Lady Kuvira. Okay. Yeah, so everyone's having so much fun without her. They're also busy doing great things, and she's struggling to walk. That hurts. Yeah, and I think that's part of why I had that instinct, like, you should stick around. There are a handful of things that are just staples of being healthy, I think. We need to be around people who care about this. Like, we need social support. 
And I don't mean like people helping you necessarily, but you need to be around people for whom you have regard and who have regard for you. And you need to be occupied. You need to like have things that you do that are focused on like something in the future that you that you look forward to. And you need to have a physical component. Like so often we sacrifice these things thinking we can go without, but there's like an, an insidious toll it plays. And about the social thing, this is something it took me a while to realize. I can think back to periods of my life. I could map out the high points were always when I had a really cool and fun social thing going, like social group or like really close friends who I could talk to regularly, do activities with. And the times where I really hit my lowest, it's when I didn't have that. You know, it's weird. Like we think we know ourselves and we think we know what gives us happiness and satisfaction. But weirdly, like it comes back to the basics a lot of the time, I think. The things that go wrong don't feel as bad when you have like a really solid foundation in place for yourself. I know you're frustrated, but of course I'm frustrated. A crazy man poisoned me, and now I can't dress myself, or cook for myself, or, or do anything for myself. And this whole time, my friends have been off helping the world while I'm stuck with you, and you can't even heal me! No, she doesn't mean that. That came out wrong. Katara knows that, it's okay. It's alright. Let your anger and frustration flow like water. <laughs> I'm tired, Katara. I'm so tired. But you're not the first Avatar who's had to overcome great suffering. Can you imagine how much pain Aang felt when he learned that his entire culture was taken from him? He chose to find meaning in his suffering. What am I going to find if I get through this? I don't know. But won't it be interesting to find out? <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's so wonderful having Katara be that, that person, you know? It's really beautiful seeing her like this. Take that first step. And your second step, and your third step. Here you go. And you get a Naga hug as a reward. Beautiful. You can see her too? How'd you do that? Is the dog real? I want to show you how much better I'm doing. This is how the show started. It's an interesting comparison. Even at the start of the series, she was better physically than she is now. I just think you need to... If you say be patient, I swear I'm gonna water smack you in the mouth! No, I was going to say you need to... not worry about the future. Be grateful for where you are now and the progress you've made. Yeah, Tenzin's right, but that hurts to hear. It's not what you want to hear at all. But sometimes I worry I'll never fully recover. Please don't tell Mako and Bolin I wrote to you and not them. I don't think they'd understand. You'd be surprised. Everything all right, sweetie? <laughs> I need to be where the action is. Where my friends are. I want to go alone. And have some time to clear my head. It'll be good for me. Oh? Is she already planning on not going? Or does something happen along the way? I can't believe it! Mind if I take a picture for my wall of avatars? But if I could have met any avatar, I'd have to pick Kiyoshi. Taking down a shark squid with one hand? Spoiler alert. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I just started reading the Kyoshi novel. The first one. Thieves! Get back here! Oh, don't worry. The avatar's right here! I just wanted some lunch, but all right. Ah! You sure she's the avatar? Ouch. And then to have people rubbing it in your face. That was a mistake. <sighs> There's a lot in the hair cutting. Like, personally, even though I don't know how connected it is really, it reminds me of Zuko cutting his hair as like a fresh start. There's also a little bit of like spite in it. You know, like when you want something so badly, but you feel like you can't get it, a natural response to that sometimes is like, just forget it. You know, like I don't need that anyway, or I'm gonna do my own thing. In a way it's an escape from the pain of feeling like you can't actually get what you really want. But I think there's some good that comes out of that too, because it helps you 
sort of get unstuck from what you're hyper focused on and you end up back towards yourself a little bit it's not the best solution because you don't want to like throw anything away right you don't want to like lie to yourself and tell yourself you don't want that or that it's meaningful to you but you know if you're not going anywhere sometimes that kind of crash is like the beginning of of the rebuild i've gone through that a couple times in my life like when i was a teenager i had a period where i dropped out of school my attitude at that time was like everything is stupid all establishment is stupid i'm gonna make my own way i don't need to be part of mainstream society or whatever and part of that was me like just not knowing how to cope with becoming an adult and actually performing well in, in what was expected of me but part of that also was that I, I did need to sort of have like a correction and to like refocus on myself a little bit and find my own identity and so I'm not sure if that's really what's going on here but that's just what I'm thinking about while watching it it's the avatar doesn't the avatar have ponytails do you mind maybe we can help you get better for years people have been saying they can help me get better nothing's worked I need to figure this out on my own There's some truth to that, right? Like people can support you, but they can't fix things. And we know that. And that's very mature from Cora too, because in the past she was always like looking to others to like fix her problems and then getting frustrated with them when they couldn't. I just think it would be better to categorize things better. She should see herself as the, the agent of her own healing. But like you still need friends, you know? You need people. You also need to focus on yourself. It goes together. Dear mom and dad, I arrived in Republic City a couple She's weeks ago her. and couldn't be happy. Is that really Rava or is it a desert mirage? Desert mirage. It's like leading her, maybe? I don't know what to think of this spirit thing. I don't know if it's even really malevolent. Why did you bring me to the swamp? Is it that swamp? What am I going to find in the swamp? Not a what? Whoa. You're not real. Ah! Looks pretty real. Ah! This is terrifying. Ah! And it just got more terrifying. Ah! Ah! What is happening? Feeling better? What happened? I was hoping you could tell me. I found you passed out in the mud. How do you know I was out there? I'm pretty tapped into the goings on around here. <gasps> is it tough? What brings you to the swamp anyway? It's her, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's tough. I could just feel it. Something about the way she said that and her body language, too. She knows what's going on around here. Toph always knows what's going on around here. Around everywhere. Is she wearing shoes? No shoes. Toph confirmed. <gasps> I'm so excited. Oh my god. A spirit led me here and told me I was supposed to find someone. Is that you? Beats me. <laughs> Wait, you recognize me? In a manner of speaking. We were good friends in your previous life. Wow. Oh my god. Tough? <laughs> nice to see you again, Twinkle Toes. <laughs> Yes! I mean, and no, I don't want it to end. Why does that feel so right? It feels so right for her to meet Toph at this moment. Maybe Toph can give her something that other people can't give her. Like, while everyone's giving her softness, Toph can give her, like, firmness. Which is sometimes what you need. It must suck being Korra and having everyone tiptoe around you all the time. Toph will tell it like it is, and that sometimes that's the best medicine. Toph will not treat her like injured Korra. Toph will treat her like just Korra. I hope. That's what I'm speculating anyway. Man, I, that episode blew me away. It really went where few shows dare to go. That was such a brave choice, I think. It's such an interesting line to take. It's so relatable too, because even though what Korra has experienced is kind of way far out there, you know, just in the realms of things that most people never experience, obviously. The feelings are so real anyway. There doesn't necessarily need to be some super intense battle for you to understand what she's going through. Like really anything can trigger this, even things that seem kind of trivial, you know, like there's a depth to our emotion that sometimes doesn't necessarily reflect the actual event. It's us and like what we're going through and how severely it threatens us and threatens our identities and like our vision for the future and how we see ourselves and like all this stuff. There's multiple elements to what she's going through, obviously. One big one is her, her vision of herself and her fear for the future. And I think your vision of yourself, your expectations of yourself, play a big role in the way you interpret 
events and the, and how much the future gives you anxiety. Somebody who doesn't have really high ambitions will be more okay with living a certain kind of normal life. But for Korra and people who are really, really like, you know, have big dreams and expect themselves to be able to carry out those dreams, the feeling that the future is slipping away from you is one of the, the biggest hazards emotionally. If you really see yourself as someone who is capable of doing amazing things, any reflection that you're failing or that you're not actually on a path towards that is brutal. And I think we spend a lot of our time kind of hiding that from ourselves. But then every now and then something comes along and like cracks that open and you're like, man, I'm not on the track. Like this future is not guaranteed. Like I'm, I'm very far away from this vision I have of myself. And that's a really hard thing to reconcile. The only real thing I can think of is to just keep moving forward and simultaneously to kind of measure your expectations. But once you come face to face with it, you can't ignore it. But anyway, I've talked enough this episode, hard not to, but that's the end of this video. I'll see you tomorrow for episode three. <laughs>